Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to lecture 40 of the course on econometric methods for the statisticians, data scientists and data engineers. The title of this lecture is two-way error component regression model. In the last lecture, we considered one-way error component model and then we discussed the estimation of both fixed effects model as well as random effects model. Now, apart from estimation, one more important objective of model fitting is prediction. So, in this lecture, first uh, I will discuss uh, the prediction of one way error component model and then I will move to two way error component model. We will discuss both uh, the fixed effect model as well as random effect model and uh, how to estimate parameters of these models. Then we will also consider some of the testing procedures for two-way error component model. Now, first we consider the prediction in one-way error component model. So, suppose we want to predict S period ahead for the ith individual. That is, we want to predict the value of y i t plus s. So, your forecast period f is t plus s. Then in lecture 14, we discussed the prediction for the multiple linear regression model when the disturbances are non-spherical. So, we considered the model y equal to x beta plus u, where the variance covariance matrix of u is of the form sigma square u omega. And then the GLS estimator of beta is x transpose omega inverse x inverse, x transpose omega inverse y. Further, we want to predict the value of y f. So, actually y f is equal to x f beta plus u f. And we assume that expectation of u f u is equal to sigma square u omega. Then best linear unbiased predictor of y f for given x f is given by y hat f is equal to x f transpose beta hat g l s plus omega transpose capital omega inverse y minus x beta hat g l s or you can write it as x f transpose beta hat g l s plus omega transpose capital omega inverse u hat g l s, where u hat is the residual y minus x beta hat g l s. So, we already proved this result in lecture 14. Now, here u i t plus s is equal to mu i plus eta i t plus s. Then you can write u equal to d mu plus eta. Then we obtain the value of omega for this model, which is equal to expectation of u i t plus s into u. Then we substitute the value of u i t plus s equal to mu i plus eta i t plus s. Then we write u equal to d mu plus eta. Now, expectation of eta i t plus s into eta is equal to 0, because you know that expectation of eta i 
t plus s and then you have eta i t is equal to 0 for all t equal to 1 to capital T. So, this term has expectation 0. Then expectation of mu i into eta has is 0. Expectation of eta i t plus s into d mu is also 0. So, the only term which may have non zero expectation is expectation of mu i into d mu. Now, what is the role of d? It is the selection matrix, it selects the elements of mu corresponding to say you have some elements of d which are 1. So, corresponding to those elements, the elements of mu are selected. Now, expectation of mu i into d mu is actually equal to sigma square mu L t chronicle product E i. For instance, if you take i equal to 1, then expectation of mu 1 into d mu is equal to expectation of mu 1 into what is the form of d mu? You get 1, 1, so on, 1, then you have 0, 0, so on, 0 and so on. Then you have 0 here, you have 1 here and then you have 0 and so on. And then uh, you get 1 up to this point, then again you have all other elements 0, you have a column of 1 here and so you get this kind of matrix. Now, when you multiply it by mu, then you get mu 1, mu 1, so on mu 1 here, here you get mu 2, so on mu 2 and so on. And then when you, we take expectation, what we get? We get mu 1 square, expectation of mu 1 square is sigma square mu. So, you get sigma square mu at all these places and all other expectations are 0. So, you get sigma square mu into a matrix which has elements 1 here and then other elements are 0. So, in fact, you can write that matrix as L t chronicle product E i, where E i is the i th column of i n, means here i is equal to 1. So, you get E 1 here. E 1 is the first column of identity matrix. So, E 1 is of the form, it has first element 1 and remaining elements are 0. And if you take this chronicle product, you get first t elements 1 and remaining elements are 0. So, you get this expectation, then we have L t transpose chronicle product E i transpose P d is equal to L t transpose chronicle product E i transpose. You just substitute the value of p d here and then you can easily verify it. And if you take L t transpose chronicle product E i transpose q d, then this is equal to 0, because ultimately q d is equal to i minus p d. Then 
then oh, we have to obtain the value of omega transpose capital omega inverse. So, we have already obtained the value of omega transpose which is sigma square mu L t transpose chronicle product E i transpose. Then in the last lecture, we obtain the value of omega inverse also which is equal to 1 upon sigma square eta q d plus 1 upon sigma square 1 p d. You get this value. Then when you multiply q d by this vector, you get 0 and when you multiply it by p d, then you get the same vector L t transpose chronicle product E i transpose. So, you get sigma square mu upon sigma square 1 L t transpose chronicle product E i transpose here. Then sigma square mu upon sigma square 1 is equal to theta square. So, you get this expression for small omega transpose capital omega inverse. Then using this expression, the required element of omega transpose capital omega inverse u head is, we substitute the value of omega transpose capital omega inverse. So, you get theta square here and then you have L t transpose chronicle product E i transpose u head. Uh, just for example, if you take i equal to 1, say we take set i equal to 1, then what we get? We get 1, 1, so on 1 and then all other elements are 0 and then you have u head. So, ultimately you get the sum of first t elements means you get summation u head 1 dot t t equal to 1 to capital T. And when we divide it by t, we get say u hat i dot bar, the mean of these elements. So, ultimately omega transpose capital omega inverse u hat is equal to t times theta square, we are multiplying by t and then we divide by t. So, you get u hat i dot bar g l s. So, this is the mean of g l s residuals for the i th individual or i th cross section unit. So, this is the expression for u hat i dot g l s bar. Then using this value, we can easily obtain the predicted value of y i t plus s. Now, we consider two way error component regression model. So, our model is say y equal to alpha plus x beta plus u and the two way error component disturbances are u i t equal to mu i plus lambda t plus eta i t. Mu i is the unobservable individual effect, lambda t is the unobservable time effect and eta i t is the remainder stochastic disturbance term. So, here in two way as a component model, we have both unobservable individual effect as well as unobservable time effect. And then you have to take care of both of these effects. Now, in vector notation, we can write this equation 2 as 
u equal to d mu into mu plus d lambda into lambda plus eta. We are just like the previous case, d mu is equal to L t chronical product I n. So, this is the matrix of individual dummies and d lambda is equal to L n chronical product I t. This is all n t cross t matrix and this is the matrix of time dummies. Then we take lambda equal to lambda 1, lambda 2, so on lambda t transpose. Then we can easily verify that d lambda d lambda transpose is equal to ln ln transpose chronical product i t and then we are writing ln ln transpose equal to j n, j n is equal to l n l n transpose. Then d lambda d lambda transpose d lambda inverse d lambda transpose is equal to j n bar chronical product i t. You can easily verify it. Actually d lambda transpose d lambda is equal to n times identity matrix. Then inverse of this is 1 upon n times identity matrix. So, you get 1 upon n d lambda d lambda transpose and then uh, we write it equal to 1 upon n j n chronical product i t and then we are taking j n bar equal to 1 upon n j n. So, you get this projection on d lambda. Then just like the previous case, matrix j n bar chronical product i t averages the data into individuals. So, if we regress y on d lambda, the predicted values are j n bar chronical product i t y. And its uh, typical element is y bar dot t equal to 1 upon n summation i equal to 1 to n y i t. So, in fact, here you get the average over individuals. Now, first we consider the fixed effects model. So, suppose mu i and lambda t are correlated with explanatory variables and then eta i t's are i i d random variables having been 0 and varying sigma square eta and these are independent of x i t's for all i and t. Then just like the one way error component model, we can obtain fixed estimator of beta by using within transformation, but now you have to take care of both mu i's and lambda t's. So, accordingly you have to define the transformation. Now, suppose we define E n equal to I n minus J n bar and E t equal to I t minus J t bar and then we write Q equal to E n chronicle product E t or E n is equal to I n minus J n bar and it is i t minus j t bar. So, their chronical product is i n chronical product i t minus i n chronical product j t bar minus i t chronical product j n bar 
plus j n bar canonical product j t bar. Now, suppose we define y curl equal to q y, then y curl has typical element say y i t curl equal to y i t minus y bar i dot minus y bar dot t plus y bar dot dot. In fact, you are multiplying y by q. So, the first element you get from here i n cross chronical product i t is i n t. So, you get y itself you get y i t. Then when we multiply by this we get average over different values of t's. So, you get y bar i dot individual means when we multiply by this then we get y bar dot t average for different time points average over different individuals. And when we multiply by j n bar chronical product j t bar, then we get the vector with all elements equal to y bar dot dot. We get average over both t as well as n. So, you get y bar dot dot. So, y bar dot dot is the overall average of y i t's. Then we perform the regression of y curl equal to q y on x curl equal to q x to get the within estimator. So, our approach is the same as that for one way error component model. Just there is a difference in defining the matrix q because you have to take care of both mu i and lambda t's now. So, you get this within estimator beta curl w i equal to x curl transpose x curl inverse x curl transpose y curl, which is equal to x transpose q x inverse x transpose q y. You can easily verify that this q is an idempotent matrix. So, that is why when we substitute x curl equal to q x here we get this expression. Then averaging regression is say this is your model y i t equal to alpha plus x i t beta plus mu i plus L lambda t plus eta i t. And then we average it over individuals. So, we get y y dot t equal to alpha plus x bar dot t beta plus if you take summation over i then summation mu i is equal to 0. So, this term will vanish and here you get lambda t plus eta bar dot t. Further if we average over time then y bar i dot is equal to alpha plus x bar i dot into beta plus mu i and then summation lambda t is equal to 0. So, this term will vanish and then you have eta bar i dot and when we average over all values y bar dot dot then both mu i and lambda t will vanish 
and then we take y i t minus y bar i dot minus y bar dot t plus y bar dot dot. So, you get x i t minus x bar i dot minus x bar dot t plus x bar dot dot beta the terms involving nu i and lambda t will vanish plus you get eta i t minus eta bar i dot minus eta bar dot t plus eta bar dot dot. and then we apply OLS to this model. So, we transform all the, the observations in this form. From the original y i t, we subtract these averages over time for each individual. Then we subtract the averages over individuals corresponding to each time and then we add the overall average. The same transformation we perform with x i t also and then we simply run OLS between these transformed observations and then we get the within estimator. You can easily estimate the intercept term also say the estimate of intercept term alpha is alpha curl equal to y bar dot dot minus beta curl within estimator beta curl w i x bar dot dot. Then we estimate mu i by mu i curl equal to y bar i dot minus y bar dot dot minus beta curl w i x bar i dot minus x bar dot dot. And then we can estimate lambda t y lambda t curl equal to y bar dot t minus y bar dot dot minus beta curl w i x bar dot t minus x bar dot dot. So, you get estimates of all the parameters, these are within estimators. Testing for fixed effects. So, suppose you want to test the hypothesis H naught mu 1 equal to mu 2 so on mu n minus 1 equal to 0 and lambda 1 equal to lambda 2 so on lambda t minus 1 equal to 0. Then again just like the one way error component case, we obtain the restricted residual sum of squares based on the pooled estimator. Here we assume that mu i's and lambda t's are equal to 0 and then we obtain the pooled estimator and then sum of residual restricted residual sum of square based on these pool estimation. And then we also obtain the unrestricted residual sum of square based on within estimator. And under H naught if you consider this statistic R R S S minus U R S S divided by n plus t minus 2 divided by u r s s divided by n minus 1 t minus 1 minus k then this follows f distribution and then you can easily form the critical region also. So, if this calculated value of f is greater than the tabulated value of f at say alpha level of significance then we reject h naught at 100 alpha percent level of significance. Then we can also develop test for H naught mu 1 equal to so on mu n minus 1 equal to 0 and lambda i not equal to 0 for all i based on y bar i t minus y bar dot t equal to x i t minus x bar dot t beta plus u i t minus u bar dot t. So, under H naught we are assuming that mu i's are 0. And if we take this transformation, then these lambda t's will vanish. Or if you want to test the hypothesis lambda 1 equal to so on lambda t minus 1 equal to 0 and mu i is not equal to 0, then we consider this model. 
and we can perform the test. Now, we consider the random FFs model. So, we assume that lambda t's are i i d having been 0 and varying sigma square lambda, mu i's are i i d having been 0 and varying sigma square mu and eta i t's are also i i d having been 0 and varying sigma square eta. We also assume that lambda t's, mu i's and eta i t's are independent of each other. Then the covariance matrix of u is say we denote it by omega equal to expectation of u, u transpose, then we write u equal to d mu into mu plus d lambda into lambda plus eta and then we take transpose of this and when we multiply d mu by transpose of this, so we get d mu 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 transpose d mu transpose. So, you get sigma square mu d mu d mu transpose. Then we multiply these two terms and then we take expectations. So, we obtain sigma square lambda d lambda d lambda transpose and then we consider these two terms. So, actually you obtain sigma square eta i n t here and you can write i n t equal to i n chronicle product i t and then d mu d mu transpose is equal to i n chronicle product j t. So, you get sigma square mu i n chronicle product j t here. Similarly, here we obtain sigma square lambda j n chronical product i t plus sigma square eta i n chronical product i t. So, you get this variance covariance matrix of u and then if you take variance of u i t which is the ith diagonal element, then variance of u i t is equal to sigma square mu plus sigma square lambda plus sigma square eta. And the covariance between u i t and u j s is equal to you get sigma square mu if i is equal to j if i and j are equal, then you get a term involving mu i square, which has expectation sigma square mu and t is not equal to s. And if t is equal to s, i is not equal to j, then you get a term involving say u i t u j t, then we write u i t equal to mu i plus lambda t u j t as mu j plus lambda t. So, ultimately you get a term involving lambda t square which has expectation sigma square lambda and it is 0 otherwise. Now, we have E n equal to I n minus j bar n and E t equal to I t minus j bar t. Then in the expression for omega, we replace j n by n times j bar n and j t by t times j bar t and then we replace I n by E n plus j bar n from here you observe that I n is equal to E n plus j bar n and then we replace I t by E t plus j bar t. So, actually this is the expression we are replacing I n by E n plus j bar n 
we are replacing j t by t times j bar t, then j n by n times j bar n, again we replace i t by e t plus j bar t and so on. And then we simplify it. So, actually we get sigma square eta i n chronical product i t equal to sigma square eta e n chronical product e t plus j bar n chronical product e t plus e n chronical product j bar t plus j bar n chronical product j bar t. Further sigma square lambda j n chronical product i t is equal to n times sigma square lambda j bar n chronical product e t plus j bar n chronical product j bar t. Then in sigma square mu, mu i n chronical product j t, we again replace i n by e n plus j bar n, we replace j t by n times j bar t and then we obtain t times sigma square mu e n chronical product j bar t plus j bar n chronical product j bar t. And then we combine 11, 12, 13 and 14. So, from 12, 13 and 14, why we substitute all these expressions in equation 11. And then you can easily verify that omega can be written as omega equal to summation i equal to 1 to 4 omega i q i and this is called the spectral decomposition. Here omega 1 is equal to sigma square eta q 1 is equal to e n chronical product e t. Then omega 2 is equal to t times sigma square mu plus sigma square eta and q 2 is equal to e n chronical product j bar t. Then omega 3 is equal to n times sigma square lambda plus sigma square eta and q 3 is equal to j bar n chronical product e t. Omega 4 is this and q 4 is j bar n chronical product j bar t. And in fact, to get these expressions, what you have to do in the expression 11, first we substitute all these terms from here, then we collect the terms involving E n chronical product E t, J bar n chronical product E t, E n chronical product J bar t and J bar n chronical product J bar t. Say for example, if you take E n chronical product E t, then you get one term from here sigma square eta from here and then there is no term. If you take J bar n chronical product J bar t, then you get one term sigma square eta from here and you have one term here n times sigma square lambda and then you have one term here at t times sigma square mu. So, q 4 is this j bar n chronical product j bar t and with q 4 you have omega 4 which is t times sigma square mu plus n times sigma square lambda plus sigma square eta. Now, here omega i for all i equal to 1, 2, 3, 4 is these are the distinct characteristic roots of omega and q i for i equal to 1 to 4, these are corresponding matrices of eigen projections and you can easily verify that all these matrices q i's are symmetric, idempotent and these matrices are orthogonal to each other. This you can easily verify. Then multiplicity of eigenvalues of omega 1, omega 2, omega 3 and omega 4 are say 
corresponding to omega 1 you have q 1 and the multiplicity is n minus 1 into t minus 1. Corresponding to omega 2 you have q 2 which is E n chronical product j bar t and it has multiplicity n minus 1. Corresponding to omega 3 you have q 3 and then it has multiplicity n t minus 1 and corresponding to omega 4 you have j bar n chronical product j bar t which has multiplicity 1. Now, you can write sigma eta omega to the power minus half equal to summation i equal to 1 to 4 sigma eta divided by omega i to the power half into q i. Then the typical element of sigma eta omega to the power minus half y is if we pre multiply y by this you get say y i t star equal to y i t minus theta 1 y bar i t minus theta 2 y bar dot t plus theta 3 y bar dot dot. Here theta 1 is equal to 1 minus sigma eta upon omega 2 to the power half theta 2 is equal to 1 minus sigma eta upon omega 3 to the power half and theta 3 is equal to theta 1 plus theta 2 minus sigma eta upon omega 4 to the power half minus 1. So, what you have to do you multiply y by sigma eta into omega to the power minus half. Now, you can easily obtain the generalized least square estimator by applying OLS to y star on x star equal to sigma eta into omega to the power minus half x. So, you make these transformations and then you take y star x star and then we run OLS between y star and x star. Now, for estimation of the regression parameters and uh, variance components, we can proceed like this. Uh, we run least squares for within between individual and between time regression. So, for within regression, we take q 1 y equal to q 1 x beta plus q 1 u. For between individual regression, you take q 2 y equal to q 2 x beta plus q 2 u and for between time regression, you t multiply by q 3. So, you get q 3 y equal to q 3 x beta plus q 3 u. And then uh, using these three equations, we get within estimator beta curl w equal to say w x x inverse w x y between individual estimators say beta curl b equal to b x x inverse b x y and between time estimator equal to say beta curl c equal to c x x inverse c x y. Here w x x is equal to x transpose q 1 x w x y is x transpose q 1 y. Similarly, b x x is x transpose q 2 x b x y is x transpose q 2 y and similarly, you can define c x x and c x y also. So, this is the expression for c x x and this is c x y. And then we can obtain omega 1 hat equal to say sigma hat square eta equal to y transpose q 1 y minus y transpose q 1 x x transpose q 1 x inverse x transpose q 1 y. This is actually the residual sum of a square for within regression and then we divide it by the corresponding degree of freedom. Similarly, you get the estimator for omega 2 as which is equal to t times sigma square mu head plus sigma head square eta. In the numerator, you have 
y transpose q 2 y minus y transpose q 2 x x transpose q 2 x inverse x transpose q 2 y divided by the corresponding degree of freedom. And then you can obtain the estimator for n times sigma hat square lambda plus sigma hat square eta also, which is omega 3 hat. And then using these three equations 19, 20 and 21, we can obtain the estimators for sigma hat square nu and sigma hat square lambda. We just solve these two equations. Further, now we combine the equations 16, 17 and 18 and then we obtain this model. Say we write q 1 y q 2 y q 3 y equal to q 1 x q 2 x q 3 x beta plus q 1 u q 2 u q 3 u. And then just like the one way error component model, we apply GLS to this equation and we obtain the expression for GLS as beta hat GLS equal to w 1 beta curl w. This is within estimator plus w 2 beta curl b. This is between individual estimator plus w 3 beta curl c, where w 1, w 2 and w 3 are defined here. So, these are the expressions for w 1, w 2, w 3. You get all these expressions after a little algebraic manipulations just to have to apply GLS to this model. And the derivations are just parallel to the one way error component model. Then beta hat GLS is a matrix weighted average of beta curl w, beta curl b and beta curl c. So, this result is also parallel to the one way error component regression model and beta hat GLS is asymptotically normal, consistent and unbiased. Now, OLS is unbiased, but asymptotically inefficient. Then, uh, if you consider its standard error, then its standard errors are biased. Within estimator, beta curl w is unbiased and asymptotically as efficient as GLS estimator. In finite sample, beta hat GLS is more efficient than within estimator. So, of course, for large sample, both the estimators perform almost equally, but for finite samples, GLS is more efficient than the within estimator. Now, we consider Wu Hausman test for fixed effects against random effects. So, we want to test H naught that your true model is random effects model against the alternative that your true model is fixed effects model. Then steps for Wu Hausman test are say we run both random effect and fixed effect model. Then your test statistic is say H equal to beta head F E. This is the estimator for fixed effect model minus beta head R e transpose sigma F e minus sigma R e whole inverse beta head F e minus beta head R e. Here sigma F e is the variance of beta head F e and sigma R e is the variance of beta head R e. Then the asymptotic distribution of H under null hypothesis that the true model is random effects model is chi square distribution with k degrees of freedoms. So, using this result you can easily form the critical region and then you can test the hypothesis that your true model is random effects model or it is fixed effects model. So, in the last lecture we considered one way as a component model and then we discussed the estimation of fixed effects and random effects one way error component models. 
along with the estimation prediction is also important. So, in this lecture first we discuss the prediction problem for one way error component model, then we move to two way error component model. In two way error component model also we discussed both the fixed effects model as well as random effects model. Then uh, we can use a within estimator or between individual estimator or between time estimator for estimating the regression parameters. But uh, the most efficient estimator is that based on the GLS procedure. So, we have considered the GLS estimator also. The results are almost parallel to those for one way error component model. Then we have also considered a test for testing the fixed effect against random effect. Although for two way error component model we have not considered the problem of prediction, but uh, one can easily extend the results of one way error component model prediction to two way error component model also. Then this is the last lecture of this course. This course is of 40 lectures and this is the 40th lecture. In this course, I tried to cover almost all the topics of econometrics, which are usually taught in Indian universities at UG or PG level. I started from the very beginning, so initially we considered two variables regression model, so we started from there. Then we moved ahead to different econometric models and then ultimately we discussed some of the advanced topics like simultaneous equation model or panel data model also. Mostly my focus was towards the theoretical side. So, uh, we discussed different uh, models uh, from the theoretical aspect. We started from uh, under what conditions one should use a particular model, then what is the form of that model, then uh, how to estimate parameters of the model then what are the properties of those estimators. For some models we also considered the prediction problem and different testing procedures. Of course, at some of the places we have used some complicated derivations which uh, one cannot avoid in this kind of course. Well, uh, this course uh, requires a good knowledge of uh, matrix algebra because in at several places in many derivations I have used many complicated derivations based on matrix algebra. Then some of the applied workers may find a bit hard to follow this course. Of course, uh, in limited amount of time one cannot cover all the aspects, all the things which are required. I could not cover the application part, this thing I know, but if you want to properly apply a particular model, then you must have a strong theoretical background. So, it is not like that if you are an applied worker then you do not need theoretical results. If you have good background of theory 
good background means uh, I do not mean uh, you should know each and every deriv derivation, but you must have a good idea of under what circumstances you have to use a particular model. Say under what circumstances you have to use log it model or under what circumstances you have to use measurement error model. So, one must have this kind of information even if one is applied worker. Then one more thing which I have not covered is different softwares. Of course, uh, if you have knowledge of some econometric software, so it is a plus point for you if you have expertise in econometric software. So, I also advise you that uh, you try to learn some software and then you try to implement all these techniques which I have covered in this course to some real data set. Then it will give you the real feeling uh, of uh, this course or the different econometric models, how to interpret your results, then you will get the real feeling of it. So, enjoy the course and wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Hello and welcome to this piece of literary snippet. Perhaps the most popular literary genre after novel is the short story. Sharp, compact narratives whose charm lies not only in what is said, but also in what remains unsaid. Today I will be reading one of the shortest instances of a short story that I have ever encountered. And Indeed, the very charm of this particular story that I am going to read out today lies in the way it abruptly ends. It is an ancient tale from Mesopotamia which has been retold by several authors among whom the name of Somerset Mom stands out. Uh, the adaptation that I will be reading out is perhaps the closest to the one that Mom wrote. The story is titled in all of its adaptations almost as Appointment in Samara. Here is the story. A merchant in Baghdad once sent one of his servants to the market. The servant was supposed to buy provisions for the merchant, but when he returned, he came back empty handed. Indeed, the servant had all gone white and trembling with fear, he told his master that he had met death in the marketplace. When I entered the market, the servant said to his master, I was jostled by a woman and when I turned to look at her, I saw that she was death. I am very scared, master, because death looked at me with a threatening gesture. Can you please lend me your horse so that I can fly away from Baghdad to the town of Samara and thereby escape death? The master, being a good man, gave his servant his best horse and saw him gallop off to Samara to escape death. Then the master himself went to the marketplace and confronted death. 
Why did you make a threatening gesture to my servant? Asked the master to death. And death replied, It was not a threatening gesture. Rather, it was a start of surprise. I was astonished to see your servant here today because this evening I have an appointment with him in Samara. See you in the next episode of Literary Snippet.